very much, everybody. Good evening and welcome uh, to our celebrity edition of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. And this time around, everybody is playing for charities that benefit those affected by the events of uh, September 11th. Thank you. And we also have many of New York's finest firefighters and law enforcement officers joining us in the audience tonight. How about a big hand? Well, our heroes right here. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Greatest audience we ever had, and I mean that, yeah. And now I know that you're uh, used to helping people, but you can't go shouting out answers to everybody. We don't want any security problems here, okay? <laughs> so let's get right to it, all right, and meet the 10 stars of television, music, and film. Now ready to lend a hand, and they are Mick Foley, Stony Brook, New York. John Favreau, Queens, New York. Eve, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Martina McBride, Sharon Kansas. Kevin Bacon, New York City. Paul Rodriguez, Fresno, California. Shannon Elizabeth, Los Angeles, California. Meredith Vieira, New York City. David Allen Greer, Detroit, Michigan. And William Baldwin, New York City. All right, so welcome everybody to our show. Nice to see you all. And let's see, uh, uh, David Allen Greer. You're a big fan of the show, I hear, are you? Uh, yes, Regis, as you know, I'm a big fan. I love The Weakest Link. And I watch it. <laughs> Wrong show? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm a big fan. Uh, I have the, the home version, I play it all the time. Good, that's great. That, that'll help you a lot. <laughs> and uh, William Baldwin, you know, your brother Alec was here. In fact, he was the first one in the hot seat the night he was here. Oh. And did he give you any tips? <laughs> no, he gave me no advice. He's worried that I'm going to outdo him here. He's yeah. got to watch out. I'm That's right. You guys tonight. are very, very competitive. Yeah. Well, we're happy you're all here. Let's get started, okay? Let's see who's going to kick things off in the hot seat first with tonight's first fastest finger question, and here it is. All right. Put these movies in order of their first theatrical release, starting with the earliest. Backdraft, American Pie, Swingers, Animal House. Okay, everybody, time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting with the earliest film, and it was Animal House, and then Backdraft, and Swingers, and finally, American Pie. That's the right order. Who did it in the fastest time? Let's see. The winner is William Hall. Just like his, uh, his older brother, Alec, he got in the hot seat first. Congratulations. <laughs> and it's kind of a, a big, important day in your life, right? Your wife, China, expecting the second young Baldwin? Getting close, getting close. If we are on the million-dollar question... Yeah. ...and this beeper goes off... Yeah. She's just going to have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way I, I, I see it, too. Well, that's great. So this will be your second? Number two, we have a daughter who's 19 months old, Jameson, and we have a, a son coming within days. Are you sure it's a boy? Yeah. So who are you playing for, Bill? Well, I was going to play for the New York Times 9-11 Medius, but after meeting Mitch Foley, I think I'm going to play for the WWF Dental Plan. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hit me! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. No, I'm playing for the, the New York Times 9-11 Neediest Fund uh, and, and proud to be here in a room full of uh, New York City's finest and New York City's brave. Is it a great to have them here? They're the best. Michael, you know the rules by now. You're just 10, or rather 15 questions away from winning $1 million for your charity. And to help you win, you have three lifelines, 50-50, as the audience, and you can phone a friend. So, Bill Bowman, are you ready? Let's rock. Audience, are you ready? Yes, we're all ready. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire with William Baldwin. $100, Bill. A common piece of advice goes, be there or be what? Bear, square, aware, all alone as usual. My, nick <laughs> my nickname is B-square for Billy Baldwin, so I'll go with B, final answer. And you got it for $100. Baldwin brother going for two hundred dollars right now. What kind of bottle is most likely to have a cork? 
wine, soda, milk, Coca-Cola. A wine final answer. Yes, you got that one right too for 200. Here it is for $300. A person would most likely say, read them and weep while playing what game? Darts, polka, ping pong, IRS audit. Billy, Billy, IRS audit. <laughs> uh, I would say uh, B, poker. Yes, it's poker. Not a good poker player. He's up to $500. In geometry, the base of a cylinder is usually what shape? Triangle, circle, square, octagon. Uh, B, circle, final answer. Right for 500. <laughs> for 1,000, a traditional jack-in-the-box is designed so that the puppet pops out when you do what? Throw it? <laughs> Heat it, turn a crank, untie a ribbon. C, turn a crank, final answer. <laughs> right for $1,000. You know you're jacking the box. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll go for two dollars Baldwin in the hot seat right now. He is the third of the four Baldwin brothers uh, and incidentally starred in that uh, movie about firefighting, Backdraft. Right. Yeah. Correct. So that gave you a sample of what uh, these people go through. They definitely have a, a great appreciation for what they do. Ronnie Howard did a beautiful job with that mm -hmm. film. Yeah, it really was an intense mm -hmm. movie. You're joined by some of your friends now. Mike, Anthony, and Jennifer from the Fire and Police Department. Nice to have all of you folks here. Yeah. These are people that you've just uh, you've just known for. About I've a month just and a become half. friendly with them since uh, September 11th. Uh, uh, Anthony and Mike are uh, firefighters at Engine 40, Truck 35, over here on Amsterdam Avenue. Mm -hmm. It's nice that you go by and visit yeah. uh, the guys in the firehouse. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, nice to have you folks here. Thanks. Thank you. All right, so Bill, let's see. Um, you're in a new movie. One Eye King. Yeah, what's that about? It's like an, it's an Irish Hell's Kitchen drama. Great cast, Bruno Kirby, Armando Sante, Chaz Palmentieri. You're the only Irish one there. What are you talking <laughs> about? I know, isn't that funny? <laughs> uh, Jason Gedrick, Connie Britton, great uh -huh. cast. Dash Mihawk. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, fine. And uh, you know that you're my favorite Baldwin <laughs> brother. You know that. All right, I'm at the Yankee game the other day, and, and coming up the aisle, uh, my brother Stephen goes, to all the, oh, we're there with the three or four other people. He goes, hey, hey, guys, guys, get a load of this. Hold on a second. And he stands up, and Regis is coming up the aisle. And he goes, hey, Reg, Reg. And Regis looks at him. He goes, hey, Steve, how are you doing? He goes, hey, tell him, go ahead. Who's your favorite Baldwin? <laughs> you, baby, always has been, always will be. <laughs> Stevie B, my favorite Baldwin. I go, <clears throat> and Regis looks down and goes, oh, got to run. <laughs> <laughs> it's hysterical. Huh. All right, fine. Well, here, here's where you are. $2,000, going for $2,000, 10 away from the million. Come on, let's go Here for it, go. all right? Let's play. Here we go. $2,000. When a car's engine is flooded, it is flooded with what? Fuel, steam, electricity, exhaust. A fuel, final answer. Yes, sir, for $2,000. Here it comes for $4,000. What kind of snack is smart food? Cookie, pretzel, fruit bar, popcorn. Do I go to the movies later? Uh, really? Okay, so it's not there. Butter, butter Are you sure? Really? Okay, D, smart food. What kind of snack is smart? Okay, D, final answer. Pop popcorn, he says. All right. I, yeah, popcorn final is answer. right. Yeah. Yeah. That's Here it comes, Bill. Eight thousand dollars. I didn't. I Check said it out. Form, All right. <laughs> We're up to what now? Four, eight thousand. Eight thousand. Right. In her two thousand and one song, Missy Elliott urges you to get your what on? Your head, freak, bounce, grind. They come out at night. <laughs> Gilly. Gilly, Gilly, it's popcorn. I was going to say popcorn. <laughs> they come out at Swerve. night. They come out at night. Say uh, shake. Yeah, let's say. Uh, <coughs> Let's say, well, you know, people grind at night, too, so. No, 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 no. But we'll say B, final answer, free. Right. He's got it for $8,000. Bill, who's the wise guy who yelled out popcorn back then? <laughs> 16000 
In the abbreviation ACDC, DC stands for what? Digital circuit, direct current, discharge coupler, delta charge. B, direct current, final answer. Yes, for 16. Right. $32,000 coming up, very important that you get it, and here it is. In the classic novel, The Scarlet Letter, Hester Prine is punished for committing Print. what sin? Print, rather, sorry. Adultery, arson, avarice, atheism. Uh, it's A, adultery. Final? Final answer, finito. Just one $32,000. Okay, you know what happens here. The lights go down, his friends go away, and now it's all Bill Baldwin, all the way. Five away from one million, three lifelines left. Here it is for 64,000. Tina Peters. Tina Peters is a medical term for what common ailment? Stiff neck, athlete's foot, tooth decay, upset stomach. Well, I would... You know what? And the medical people on your lifeline? No, but a ped, ped, ped is, is, is foot, so I don't want to waste the lifelines. Okay. By logical deduction, I would uh, assume tinea penis. This is interesting. Ped, okay. I would say B, athlete's foot. Going back to your old Latin, huh? Yeah, final answer. That's it for 64. Huh? Did the right thing by keeping that lifeline and make him in handy here. He's four away from a million and going for 125,000. In the 2001 movie, The Princess Diaries, the main character learns she is the princess of what country? Parador, Kreplakistan, Genovia, Balabu. And you guys had to stick me with an audience full of firemen. <laughs> Let's go to the audience. All right, let's try the audience. We need some help for William Baldwin audience. Here we go. If you're ready, on your keypads, using A, B, C, or D, vote now. Well, it's 57% who say it's Genovia. Parador came in second at 26%. Am I, I could go to my phone or I can, I can, uh... All right, I'll go with the audience. Going to go with the final, final answer. answer. Genovia, he says it's fine. He's right for $125,000. Well, two lifelines left. We'll be back. We're here with Bill Baldwin of the famous Baldwin family. He's playing for the New York Times 9-11 Neediest uh, Fund, and he's won $125,000 and going for a quarter million. Now, let me ask you a few questions. First of all, no sign of any beeper activity, right? So, no, we're all good. Wife China still expecting, and <laughs> any moment now may produce another little Baldwin for us. Uh, what about uh, the, the lifeline? Did you, did you ask your brother, your smart brother, Alec Baldwin, to... Uh, <laughs> he won a quarter we'll million here. That. Yeah, no, he's, uh, he's on location in L.A. working on a film right now, so he wasn't available. Wasn't available. All right, fine. He'd go crazy if you tied him at 250000 That's probably 000. the real reason he wasn't available. Yeah. But you guys are involved in a lot of uh, charities, aren't you? Right. Including your whole family's involved in one big one for your right. mom. Right. My mom has a breast cancer foundation. She's a survivor since 1989, and we all serve on the board of, it's called the Carol Baldwin Breast Cancer Fund. And you've done a terrific job, too. Yeah, and she's a, a great, job. great lady. Yeah. All right, Bill. Here you go. We're going for a quarter million dollars here, and he's got two lifelines left, and he's three away from one million. Let's play. $250,000. If you miss, Bill, you lose 93000 but here it is. In April 1964, what fictional character got his own zip code due to the thousands of letters sent to him each year? Was it Snoopy, Superman, Smokey Bear? Ronald McDonald. Snoopy, Smokey Bear, Superman. Ronald McDonald. Okay, uh, let me.
it doesn't make sense to take away two because I'm, I'm really sort of not quite sure about any of them. <laughs> um, I'm feeling Snoopy for some reason because of the date. I'm feeling Snoopy. Feeling Snoopy. <laughs> um, all right, let's call Stella. And Stella does? Stella is the dean of, of a university in California. The dean of a university, huh? She's the dean of one of the colleges at a university. Fine, let's get Stella on the line, at and see if she can help us. Hello? Hello, Stella. Yes? Hi, Regis Philbin calling from a Wants to Be a Millionaire. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Regis? Great. We've got uh, Bill Baldwin here, and he's won $125,000. Wow. And going for a quarter million if he can get through this, uh, this uh, question. So he okay. turns to a university dean for help. <laughs> All right? All right. Well, I hope I can. Well, we hope you can, too. 30 seconds, Bill, and they start right now. Stella, in April 1964, what fictional character got his own zip code due to the thousands of letters sent him each year? Was it Snoopy, A, Snoopy, B, Superman, C, Smokey Bear, D, Ronald McDonald? Um. In April 64, what fictional character got his own zip code due to the thousands of letters sent him each year? Snoopy, Superman, Smokey Bear. <laughs> ah, ran out of time. That, okay. This is a, uh, a great trivia question, I think, but it's kind of difficult, too. Want to narrow it down by two and see if one jumps out at you? Hello, Bill. Yeah, uh, yeah, let's do that. I was just trying to see. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. Take, Computer, two take away two of those wrong ones. Let's see what happens. Well, there's Smokey and Snoopy. Lose 93 if you get it wrong. Okay, let's say... He's going. C, Smokey Bear. I gotta ask you this. Final answer? Yes. Yes, for a quarter! Mascot of the U.S. Fire Service. Far out. I was thinking 64, but then when you started the logical deduction of like who would be riding and why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, good. So now we have all the lifelines. No lines more lifelines. No more lifelines. Uh -oh. Two questions away, though, and we're going for a half million dollars. I got to tell you, should you miss, you lose 218,000. Right. Well, let's take a look at it now for 500,000 dollars. The first commercial radio broadcast of U.S. presidential election returns was for what election? Harding and Cox. Taft, Brian, Hoover, Smith, Roosevelt, Hoover. First commercial radio broadcast. Election returns for the presidency. Can we call Stella again? <laughs> <laughs> now we should have called Stella. <laughs> If I had only known. Um, I think I should uh, walk away with the cash for sure. On Not a bad idea. Want to walk, Bill? Yeah. Yeah. The answer is Harding and Cox. Quarter million dollars. New York Times Fund. Look at how you have to show it. What a smart family. $250,000 to the New York Times 9-11 neediest fund. And don't let anybody tell you differently. That was my favorite ball. Game. All right. Now, let's... Paul Rodriguez? Sir? Did you ever write a letter to Smokey the Bear? No, no, Reg. My neighborhood was more of a Joe Camel crowd. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because he'd give you things. <laughs> All right, we want to find out who'll be in that hot seat next, so here's the next fastest finger question. Here it comes. Put these magazines in order of when they were first published, starting with the earliest. Talk, Vogue, Vibe, Sports Illustrated.
Okay, everybody, time's up. Let's see this answer in the correct order, starting with the earliest magazine, and it was Vogue. And then Sports Illustrated, Vibe, and finally, Talk. That's it. Let's see who got it right. Fastest time. Take a look. The winner is... Oh, it's a tie. It's a tie between Kevin Bacon and John Pavlov. Here's what we'll do. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll let them duel it out. It's Bacon versus Pavlov when we return. Okay, everybody, welcome back to our tie-breaking question. Yeah, it's going to be mano a mano here, Bacon versus Favreau for the hot seat. Mick Foley, yes. you're the big wrestler. Any predictions here between these two guys? It's, uh, it's close, but to the best of my knowledge, there is no six degrees of John Favreau. So. <laughs> Bad, I'm going to have to go with Kevin Bacon. Here. My man. <laughs> Ke Kevin, Kevin Bacon's not a swinger. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> okay, everybody, here it comes now. Your tie breaking fastest finger question. Put these TV series in order by the time period in which they are set, starting with the earliest. Happy Days, The West Wing, that 70s show, Star Trek Enterprise. All right, time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting with the earliest uh, period, that is Happy Days. And then you have the that 70s show, The West Wing, and finally, Star Trek uh, Enterprise. All right, now let's see who got it right between Kevin Bacon and John Favreau, the winner, John Favreau! Favreau beating Kevin Bacon by just a few seconds in that one. Congratulations. Thank you, nice to have you. Nice to have you back in New York. Oh, nice to be back. You're a Queens guy, huh? That's right. I grew up in Queens. Went to school in the Bronx. Is that right? Bronx Science, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, that's a good school. Uh, yeah, well, let's see. And you brought, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and you brought some relatives with you, your, your grandmother and your great aunt? I got Grandma and Aunt Joe uh -huh. back there. Hi, Grandma. How you doing? Wonderful. I'm so happy to be here. That's nice to have you here, too. <laughs> Grandma was in both my movies, in Maid and in Swingers. She has a part in both of them. Grandma, were you in Swingers? I'm going to have a big part. Were you one of the Swingers? I'm talking. talking. You had a talking? Part. You had a line? I had a talking part. What was your line? What was my line? Yeah. There's a boy up there who knows. <laughs> Boy, she's I got met, that. I met a young boy, and he said my part. The minute he saw me, and I, there he is up there, Gregory. <laughs> My grandma likes to flirt a lot. She was just right for that movie, wasn't she? And she loves firemen. Oh, oh boy. So she, she's got a whole bunch of She's here. in heaven right here. All right, well, we're glad to have all of you here. John, you know about the rules. You know about the lifeline sure right do. now. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. All right, John Favreau, here it is for $100. Which of these toys is usually only played with on windy days? A kite, a frisbee, a jump rope, my first wind tunnel. Well, let's see. <laughs> you like me to milk it, right? Isn't that part of the no, game? No, 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 Okay, no. a kite, final answer. You got it for $100. John Favreau for $200. The general principle is known as a rule of what? Toe, pinky, thumb, Tush. C thumb, final answer. Yes, the rule of thumb. $300 right now. Which of these athletes is most likely to take part in a tag team competition? Tennis player, figure skater, professional wrestler, the Olsen twins. <laughs> now that, that's a match I'd like to see. <laughs> but uh, what do you say? Go with the wrestling. Okay. <laughs> I gotta take the advice of my uh, my colleague and go for C professional wrestling finance. That is right for three hundred dollars. <laughs> Here it is, John, for five hundred. The zodiac sign Pisces is represented by a pair of what? Fish, bulls, birds, deer. A fish, final answer. 
yes for $500. Take a look at this for 1000 What household device typically has a steam switch and a spray button? Dishwasher, blender, air conditioner, iron. That would be D, iron. Finals? Finals? Yes, you're right for 1000 What charity are we playing for? We're playing uh, for the Marsha McLennan Foundation in honor of the Puglisi family. And they're, uh, they were set up to take care of the uh, families of the victims of the uh, World Trade Center. Yeah, that company got hit real bad. Yeah, pretty yeah. bad. All right, good enough. $2,000, John, here it is. What member of a band is most likely to perform a rim shot? Keyboardist, drummer, bassist, guitarist. Rim shot. Well, they don't have a bad comic, so... I'll go, Bada bing! Yeah, I'll go with B, B drummer. Final, Final answer. Yes, you're right. Great job. Two thousand. Now we're up to four thousand dollars. The sitcom Scrubs features interns who work where? Hotel, bank, hospital, law firm. I met my wife when she was an intern. At a, at a hospital, and I'll go, and John, John McGinley, a friend of mine, is in the show. Uh, I'll go with C, final answer, hospital. You're right, the $4,000. <laughs> and here it comes for 8000 Knob Hill is a famous historic neighborhood in what U.S. city? Seattle, Cleveland, San Francisco, Charleston. Wow. Knob Hill. I left my heart. <laughs> well, something's telling me, uh... Rice room. <laughs> okay, I get it. It's a good thing they're here, because I didn't know this one. Uh, C, San Francisco, final answer. Yeah, yeah. They're right for $8,000. thousand, John, take a look. Elizabeth Arden's salons all have what signature feature? A red door, velvet walls, a gold ceiling, pink carpeting. Tom, 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 Toro, Toro, Toro. Red, red, the <coughs> door. Red yeah. door, hey, red door. Elizabeth <laughs> Arden, hey, final answer. Whoa, he's right for $16,000. It took a while, but he got there. We'll take a break. We'll get back. They'll go for $32,000. All right, so John, playing for Marsh McClendon. You've won 16000 We're going for 32000 All of your life lines are here. Let's, let's get back to it. Let's play with John Patro. $32,000. In the 1999 movie, Analyze This, Robert De Niro's character seeks psychiatric treatment for what? Claustrophobia, hallucinations, panic attacks, amnesia. My instinct is, is, is C, but I'm wondering if I'm confusing that with The Sopranos. I know it's not A. I know it's not B. Did you see the movie? I did see the movie. Yeah. Uh, I think it's... Everybody in that business is the C. Yes. <laughs> I'll go with, uh, with C, yeah, Panic yeah. Attacks. Final? Final answer. Just won $32,000. I love that clue. Everybody in this business is panic attacks. <laughs> I'm, I'm having one. The lights, having, they didn't do this the in lights rehearsal. Went down. I'm, yeah. This is scary. No, no, you're just I got me. big shoes to fill with Baldwin. Uh -huh. good That's job. right, you do. Just me and you right now. But right. you're five away and you got the three lifelines. Here it is for 64000 What best-selling book is subtitled An Old Man, A Young Man, and The Last Great Lesson? The Greatest Generation. A River Runs Through It. Tuesdays with Maury. The road ahead. It's not A. It would make sense for C, although I didn't read any of these books, I'm sorry to say. C makes the most sense. You know what? The audience is, uh, is usually right on these things. 
and I think it's uh, an appropriate time to use my, my lifeline. Want to go to the audience like on this one? The audience. All right, that's what he wants. Audience, we need some help for John. If you're ready, on your keypads, using A, B, C, or D, vote now. Looks like Maury. Tuesdays with Maury, 78%. The audiences are right like 90% of the time. I watch the show. Do you? And the audiences are real sharp. So I'll go with the audience and say, uh, see two Tuesdays with Maury, final answer. The audience is right, $64,000. You were kind of leaning towards that one anyway, weren't you? I was. All right, here we go for 125000 John. What fruit flavor is framboise? Raspberry, peach, strawberry, plum. Well, framboise is French. My, my father speaks French. And I don't want to just take a guess, because that's a lot of money to lose. That's a lot of money for a charity. So I'll, uh, I'll call up my dad and use my lifeline. Terrific idea. Let's get uh, Mr. Favreau on the line, AT&T. Hello, Chuck. Yeah. Regis Philbin calling from New York. How are you? Oh, I don't know now. Uh, I'm fine. I've got your son and your mother here. He's hung up on a question. He's won 64000 going for 125 Yes. All right, you've got 30 seconds, John. Let me start now. What fruit flavor is framboise? A, raspberry, B, peach, C, strawberry, or D, plum? Framboise is... Raspberry. Pretty sure? I'm pretty sure. All right. Breathe, Dad. We got plenty of time. Okay. How's Marge? <laughs> Marge is fine. You gonna come out for dinner afterwards? We're gonna have dinner. Okay. It all depends who's paying. Okay. <laughs> It all depends if you get this one right. Uh, my guess. dad, I'll go with my dad. My dad said uh, raspberry. Final answer. I gotta go with final answer. My dad says it. Well, your dad's right for one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. He goes for two hundred and fifty thousand when we come back. Favreau has won $125,000 for the Marshall McClendon Companies Incorporated Victims Relief Fund. All right, John, let's get back to it now. You've won $125,000. Should you miss here, you'll lose $93,000. But here it comes with one lifeline left for a quarter million. Let's play. Here it is, John. $250,000. The annual Iditarod race commemorates a historic 1925 delivery of what? Gold, food, medicine, fuel oil. Well, let's see. The Iditarod, if I'm not mistaken, is a race that goes across Alaska with a team of, 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 of dogs pulling a sled. But that doesn't really help me with these choices now, does it? I guess you got to associate. Now, now, if there was like it was delivering ice, I would know that that's probably not right. But no such luck here. So let's uh, let's use the last lifeline and uh, narrow it down. A let's bit. narrow it down, computer. Please take away two of the wrong ones. Now, if it was my money, I'd just say medicine. But it's for charity, and you got me over a barrel now. Yeah, I know you hate to lose it for the for charity. Because that could that could help a lot of people. No lifelines. I would just feel lousy if I lost this money. And uh, I'd be pretty proud to walk away with 125 sure. uh, for needy people. So uh, I, will, I will walk away. He's going to walk away. The answer was medicine. You were on the right track. Here you go, John. Good to see you again, buddy. Good luck. Well, John made 125000 for the Marsha McClendon Relief Fund. Great work, John. Nice job. All right, we're running out of time, so here's the next fastest finger question. Here it comes. 
with these advertising catchphrases in the order they debuted, starting with the most recent. They're great. What's up? Rolaid spells relief. Just do it. Okay, time's up. Let's see this answer in the correct order, starting with the most recent phrase, and it was what's up. And then just do it. Rolaid spells relief. And finally, they're great. Now, let's see who got this one right. Fastest time. Two of them in. Shannon Elizabeth. Hey, there go, Shannon. Good for you. Come on, darling. Wait. Good for you, Shannon Elizabeth, in the hot seat right now. You know, we only have a few seconds left, Shannon, so we're going to get right into it, okay? Okay. You know the rules. You know about the lifelines. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Here it comes, Shannon, for $100. A restaurant customer pretends to write in the air in order to ask for what? <clears throat> the check? The menu? The dessert? Pen pals? I'd say a check. Final answer. And you got it for $100. Sure. <laughs> for $200, Shannon. Someone trying to balance his work and personal life is said to be looking for a happy what? Medium? Regular, approximate, full-time nanny. <laughs> I'd say that'd be happy medium, A. Eh? Final? Answer. Yes, the happy medium. You like that, 200? <laughs> Going for $300. What professional's private office is often known as his chambers? Architect, accountant, judge, a guy wearing the hood. <laughs> um, I think it's judge's chambers, so it'd be C. Final answer. Got it for 300. Five hundred dollars, Shannon. By definition, a person with a forked tongue does what? Talks too loudly, speaks deceptively, sings well, eats a lot. <coughs> what? <coughs> oh, it's very Be mine. It sings well. <coughs> Be mine. Speak deceptively. Be mine. I thought it was speaks deceptively too. You're confusing me. <laughs> okay, B speaks deceptively. Final answer. You don't need them, Shannon. You're right. <laughs> I know. I was. She confused me she was too. Singing, so I thought it was sing. <laughs> this is, I meant to accept, accept this is not the view. You the know. B. All right. <laughs> I, don't know what, I still don't know what she's talking about, but for $1,000, here it is. A traditional hoedown features what type of music? Rock, hip-hop, classical, country? D-country, final answer. Yes, ma'am, for $1,000. Oh, Shannon, that sound means we're out of time for the last one. Shannon will be back here with the rest of our celebrity contestants. We want to thank New York's police and firefighters for joining us tonight. God bless them. From New York, everybody, good night.